everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This week's scrapbook layout is one of me and my grandfather. This is me about two or three years old. Um, it had been a family barbecue. Apparently I'd been running around like a lunatic and I'd fallen over and grazed my nose. So I think granddad was giving me some, some attention there and sharing his beer as you do when you're that age. <laughs> so it was a lovely picture and I just knew I had to scrapbook it. So I'm bringing in some paper from Rosie's studio. I've got this nice brown wood effect with the gold flecks or stripes going through it. So the plan is that I'm gonna die cut lots of hearts, different sizes, different styles. I've just raided all the ones I can find and you can see there. So that's one of the strips from the paper that I cut down because I am doing 10 by 10 layouts. So it's just the uh, two inches, two by 12 that is. Then I'm also die cutting on craft card. So craft card's kind of the main, I'd say, colors to this, the brown, the craft card, just that raw kind of look is what I'm going for. Then I'm bringing in different size stamped hearts and I'm gonna use my Versamark here because I'm gonna heat emboss them. So I wanna do like a strip through the middle and that uh, paper that I'm holding in my hand is also gonna go down through the middle as well. So you can see here, I'm just inking them and then I'm gonna add my copper embossing powder. Now I was hoping it would be copper. You would think it says copper, it would be copper, but actually it's rose gold. So it wasn't ideal, but I still managed to make it work. So, you know, like I said before, layouts are very easy to save. You can salvage them and things like that. So I'm really still pleased with how this turned out. So I'm just going back in and filling in any gaps and just covering that again with my powder and get that heat set. So you can see now that I guess it is kind of coppery when it, yeah, when it hits the light, there is this rose gold look. Anyway, so I'm sealing the edges here with my Versamark. I'm just literally using the pad and just brushing it along the sides and then just pour a strip of the embossing powder and then just dab the ends. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because this paper is very similar to the pages in my scrapbook. It's craft card in my scrapbook and it would just look lost against it. So by doing this frame, it just helps lift it from that paper. So I'm just brushing off some excess. I've gone over a little bit further there. You can just see, um, I'm just gonna go along there and just kind of even it out a little bit there and then get that all um, heat set. Make sure you do the front and the back. As you can see here, I'm just setting the back just so you don't get any kind of loose bits on the back of your page. And there you can see I've got this nice, nice pattern coming along. So there's that strip for the middle. So I'm just folding over the edges. And it's it was it was kind of like a graduated kind of paper. So it was light on one side and then dark on the other. So this darker strip actually does show up better once it's laid over the top there. So I'm just trimming off a little bit of that picture. Uh, you can see the idea for the, the color palette actually came from the picture, the background. I think it must have been very hot summer because the grass had all dried out. So I'm just gonna mat this one on white cardstock as I always do. And then I will be distressing that because I don't want any kind of real kind of blunt edges, raw edges, sorry, and any crisp white. I don't want that look in this layout. I'm also using craft card to mat on top again. And then I'm gonna bring in my vintage photo, distress photo, vintage photo, oxide ink. And I'm just gonna go around here and you can see that I'm just kind of, just roughing them up a bit, making them look a bit dirty, a bit aged, a bit vintage, a bit antique, <laughs> anything you wanna call it. I'm distressing the edges there. And I do this for everything. So I'm doing my craft card frame there. And then I'm gonna go and do every single heart. So I painstakingly go through them all. And I'm starting off with this doily heart, which is kind of the main, the main one I would say. And it does make quite a difference. I mean, you can see now the kind of color against the craft card and just going around all the edges there as well. And by doing this, it just lifted it. It just looked quite flat. If you just put a plain graft, craft, a plain craft card on top of craft card, it doesn't look very good. So by doing this, it just gives them a little bit of a silhouette, a little bit of a shadow, and it really does make a difference. So you can see there how different they all look. And then I just get all those tiny ones in a minute and I just pile them all together on that card and just dab over with my dauber much, much quicker. So I'm also just dressing the edges of this strip 
although you don't see it too well in the video you, it does really come out and it just gets rid of that white edge so now I'm running that strip through the middle and I'm going to start layering everything up now I never stick anything down okay so even at this point nothing is stuck down I just want to start positioning things again I spend ages deciding where my photo is going to go but I do opt for that kind of slightly down towards the left but everything is going to kind of sit within that central strip and then I'm just starting to layer up where I want all these hearts to go so I'm putting some of the paper over the craft card the larger ones on top of the la the smaller um, the smaller ones on top of the large ones and so on so you can see I've got it all kind of where I think I'm just taking a picture of it just so I can kind of then you know revert back to that now I realized that that strip was actually too thick so I decided to go down about one and a quarter inch again I'm just going to distress the edge there it was kind of you were losing some of those embossed hearts that I'd done although you don't see a lot of them it's just meant to be little kind of areas of interest that will just kind of little bits shine you know show through so the intention isn't for you to see all of it just parts of it so now I'm going to stick that one down right through the middle of that page and the reason really is just so I don't have any waste I like to especially when I'm doing 10 by 10 layout if I'm always cutting down the paper then it's good to use that paper back in your layout so I'm just sticking this uh, photo down there with some foam adhesive again I always like to lift my photos up but again I'm not sticking it yet because the photo is going to be the last thing to be stuck down so what I'm doing now is I'm going to stick down all those hearts and some of them go directly onto the uh, paper and some are on uh, foam some are again stuck then directly down so there's lots of different levels lots of dimension to this which again you'll see in the photos at the end it's probably harder to for you to see at the minute but you know yeah some are on the foam and some aren't so it's very um, erratic there's no kind of flow or um, what's the word I'm looking for nothing's kind of equal it's just really random so you can see that I'm just finishing up and get the last couple of bits down there and I do one one little rogue one over towards the left hand side there and it just starts to really come together now I'm really pleased with it because these kind of things are just in my head and then I I never know how they're going to turn out so <laughs> Um, I remembered I had this stamp set from one of my UK magazine subscriptions and it's the Apple Blossom is the brand and they've got these two pints of beer kind of clinking together and I just thought I know it's me as a baby but I'm there with having a beer with my granddad as you do so I thought I'm going to bring in these little beers so I'm just inking them with the same vintage photo oxide ink just again I don't want the black kind of frame and then I'm just bringing in my watercolor pencils there although I don't use the water I just use the the plain pencil just to color them in um, I'm using more of a mustardy kind of yellow and do a little bit of blending there just so that I can get them as looking as real as possible these ones come with a matching dye as well which is great but, and uh, so I'm just gonna get that run through but obviously these give you a white border so again in a minute you'll see that I end up distressing that because it was too white and obviously I've started to kind of dirty everything up and try and keep it all within those browns so now I'll just bring in again and just go around those edges just to keep everything kind of matching these are great really really fun it's the first time I've used them like I said I've been recently sorting out all my stamps and um, I found a lot that I forgot about so I'm trying to use them now so I'm just playing around see where I want to position that and then I need to do my title so for this one I'm using these craft card letters and I'm going to do happy hour <laughs> again it's a really fun play on words it is a happy hour you know that was a nice moment mum said like you know it was a, it was a family barbecue it was a good day and it's just nice and I just thought that it's a good play on words um, I want to say these are from Hobbycraft, but I think they might have been from the range. I could be wrong. But there you go, you can see there, so I've just done Happy Hour. So now I'm bringing in some of my Rosie Studio words. These match the papers. So I'm using Cherish at the top there on the photo. Then I've got that one there is uh, Happy Little Moments. And then I'm just uh, going to go over them with glue. 
because they do peel off, especially that one that's going on that photo. And then the one at the top there is smile. So just nice appropriate words. I thought they worked really, really well. And then I bring in this gold one, which says remember. And I just thought that was really nice. It's one of my favorite pictures of my granddad who is no longer with me. So it's just a nice one that I've been wanting to scrapbook for a long time. So I'm bringing in the glossy accents now. And I actually go over the whole of the happy hour and also the foam on the beer. And it really transformed it. It made those letters pop and it just, they really lifted and I just thought it looked brilliant. Next, I'm doing a little cheers. So I've just got my stamping up alphabet letters and just on the left there, I'm just gonna stamp cheers. Again, just near the beer. I just thought that was quite good. And then because I've got that yellow all on its own in the beer, I've brought in this mustard Nouveau drops and it just worked really well to just kind of complement it. Just those little pockets, little bursts of yellow and it really did finish off the layout perfectly. And this has become one of my favorite layouts. I've thoroughly enjoyed this one and it has come together so well by just sticking with, you know, very, very few colors. And you can see there, it just looks brilliant. And that this is the happy hour and the, with the new, with the um, glossy accent, sorry. I think it's just turned out so, so well. And I'm super pleased that this photo is, has been given such a lovely layout. So. There you go. I hope I've inspired you with a more masculine layout this week. It was really, really fun for me to do as all my layouts are. They're, you know, they're just, I love them. I really, really, really enjoy doing them. So I hope I've inspired you. I hope you give it a go. I'm getting some lovely comments with these layouts and lots of you are saying that I'm inspiring you to, to start scrapbooking, which is really nice. And um, I encourage you to do so. And um, yeah, if you enjoyed today, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.